What's up guys, in this video we're gonna go over how to build a custom photo box using just a metal shelf. So my name is Chris, welcome to Daily Refinement. In my show, I talk about how to build an online business and in today's show, we're gonna go over all the steps, materials, and the process of building your own photo box. I recommend you make one that fits the exact things that you sell like me, so let's get into the show. We're gonna start with empty shelves so i use metal shelves from home depot i recommend that before you go on a shopping trip to home depot or on amazon make sure you have your full supply list set up and your supplies might be different depending on the dimensions of your shelves my shelves are six feet wide and 77 inches tall and i got them all at home depot at the same time you can order it depending on where you live they can do delivery or for what i did is i just ordered them all and then i borrowed the home depot truck for two hours to get all the shelves that i needed all in one trip. So I recommend doing the top shelf and the bottom shelf together. And the reason why I chose metal is because my lights are magnetic. I did find them on Amazon, so they're gonna basically magnetically stick to give you the widest and most even lighting. And that's why I chose this. The bottom shelf gives me enough room to put my feet underneath here so I can move closer to the object to angle it. And essentially the backdrop is gonna go along here. And we're going to go over all the different steps in building that but essentially start with a shell you can also order a photo box which i had previously but this photo box is too narrow so i decided to make something that's a little bit wider and again this unit is going to be the same as the unit that you guys normally watch me do things in so i'll have actually three units side by side by side that look exactly the same so let's get into building the backdrop now Okay, we're gonna go over the light setup. I recommend you set up the lights before you put the backdrop in. So all the lights are magnetic and I'm gonna show my placement of the lights. It's important if you can usually not to shine your light directly on the object because that'll give it too harsh of a look. So essentially what I've done is I put these eight lights around the item and then later I'm gonna put diffusion paper on top of these so that the light is even softer. The general rule for photography is you want as much light as possible and as soft of light as possible to give the most accurate look. Um, these lights are 5500K is the color. You can just look that up and get any kind of lights that you, you wish. That LED strip lighting should work fine as well. I just picked these because they're magnetic um, and they work with my specific setup. And then we have this surge protector right here where all of the things plug into. You can see, I'm gonna turn it on for just a moment. You can see all the lights will come on at the same time. It's nice because you can also turn one switch off that turns off all your lights at the same time. I just used some Velcro strips and I use this throughout my whole setup quite often. I have all this linked again in the description, but these Velcro strips are great because you can attach anything even without the magnets. So I have it set up right here so it's easy to access and turn on and off. I'm trying to create the brightest, softest light that I can. So let's get into the next section. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about diffusing the light. So I have put this diffusion paper over the lights and I've linked it in the description below. Essentially, when you do that to all of your lights, you're making the lighting a lot softer and more spread out, and that's gonna give you colors that are more true to the actual color. Okay, so we're gonna go over building the backdrop right now. As you guys know, I sell clothing, and sometimes you want a longer backdrop for, let's say, jeans or dresses or overalls are really long, so I want a six foot by six foot wide backdrop. Now, it's very expensive to buy one solid piece, and I have a Prius, so I needed to cut things down to fit in my car. So this is insulation and we'll link it in the description below. It's very, very lightweight and it is stiff. And the reason why I picked insulation as the material is normally I use a painting canvas because I like to poke basically bobby pins to hold my items in place. And this foam you can actually poke into. That's why I chose this material versus like plywood. Um, also Home Depot is happy to cut wood to the size that you need, but um, I wanted to use this foam because just because I can stick something into it. So I basically just used a, um, a utility blade to cut. There's also perforations along the sides of this, so you can cut it down to the specific size. Now I'm going to put it into the box now and let's see how it fits. Okay, so now you guys can see it makes one long six foot wide space to take my pictures. I'm gonna turn the lights on so you can see this is the surface. I'm gonna definitely soften up these lights because it's a little harsh right now. Also these lights, you can adjust and turn them down and dim them so that they're not as harsh. And as you can see, I can walk right up to the panel 
because my feet are right next to it. So now I have one long surface and now I'm gonna cover it with a specific carpet and we'll go over that in the next section. Okay guys, we're gonna go over the backdrop. So I'm gonna turn the lights off for this demo, but essentially what we're doing is I pick this fabric. It's actually a Sherpa fabric. I got it at Joann's and I got the number. So we will link in the description so you guys can find out the exact one. The reason why I picked this Sherpa fabric is because it's a little bit sticky, meaning the fabric will grab onto the item. So I do use a hanger to, to hold my items in place because it will slide off, but it does give us a little bit of help in holding the item in place. And that's important when I'm staging clothing to make sure that it has the right shape so that's why we picked this material and as you can see it's 59 inches wide so it doesn't quite cover the entire six feet wide canvas but it is more than six feet long this is a little like six and a half feet from top to bottom so this gives me the a backdrop that's big enough for almost any clothing item and if you take pictures in the portrait mode um, it's going to be able to basically take a picture of any clothing item, but I personally use square mode because I think it looks better. So this gives me a pretty decent sized canvas to work on. So when you guys are shopping for fabric, I recommend going to Joann's, shopping around, looking for material that works for you. They do make a similar fabric in white. I used to use white, but the reason why I decided to go with gray is because it acts as a gray card and I actually don't want to edit my photos. A lot of people are asking about why gray instead of white because doesn't white rank better on Google? I think white does rank better on Google, but the majority of my sales are native on eBay and it's not worth it for me to edit the photos perfectly white. It's very, very hard to photograph against white because it does require, in my opinion, some post photo editing to make the pictures look right. So with gray, I basically can just take pictures natural and upload them without doing any editing. That's why I picked this material. I did white background for years and I rather do gray now because it saves time. Again, in my opinion, I still think white photos look better, but because my shop is more of a volume shop, I'm going for quick and easy, accurate. That's my main prerogative. But if you're going for professional, most likely most shops go with white or off white is gonna give you the most professional looking. Also, the pile of my carpet is like a medium height and that's what allows it to grab. So if you're using a true flat lay, flat on the ground, or you have more, if you have more angle on it, and I recommend either using a painting easel or the bottom of a shelf or a drafting table to create the angle that you want. Essentially what I want you guys to do is make sure that the, the pile of the carpet matches whatever setup that you have. So again, don't watch this video and then go build the exact same thing and then message me back that it didn't work for you because you need to test. Every single setup is gonna be different. Your lighting is gonna be different. Your room is gonna be a different size. I picked this shape because I have room for a dedicated photo booth. If you need something that needs to be taken down afterwards, I would not use this type of setup. I'd probably use a painting easel because that's easier to move in and out or a drafting table on wheels. I have tried all those different methods. So again, do what works for you and we'll see you guys in the next section. Okay, we're gonna go over staging now and how I set that up. So I sell basically two categories, tops and bottoms, and I have some fishing line hooked up to the top of the shelf. So however you wanna attach this fishing line is up to you, but fishing line is very, very durable. And you can't see it in the picture because I cut my pictures off right above the hanger before the string. So one of the reasons why I use a hanger instead of laying it flat against the surface is because I can grab the bottom of the garment and go like this, and I don't have to restage the item on the back. So I can take picture number one, take the pictures, come in, picture number two, flip it over. Now with pants, because pants are longer, I actually have a higher loop on the backdrop so I can take pictures of pants. So same thing, take a picture of the pants. It's easy to fold against this material as well. And then I flip it like this. And if you hold the bottom of the garment, you don't have to stage it as much on the bottom. You have to get used to the pull and flip, but once you get that set up, when I'm done, I pull it off of the hanger and then I fold it like this. And then it goes into my bag system for my inventory. So this backdrop, I just use a piece of fishing line that makes it really easy. And also it's pretty easy to just hook it in by just looking where the, the opening opens, stick it in and that's how it stays against the backdrop. All right, guys, just a quick plug for my mentorship group. It's a patreon.com slash the resource podcast. I recommend what you do is you film yourself in your process, post it in the Facebook group, and we have about 2,000 people in there which, who will help you refine your process so you're getting the exact results that you want. So we appreciate you guys. 
There's thousands of hours of coaching inside that call and that Facebook group is pretty much 24 seven. So let's get back to the video. Okay, when you go over the photo process, I recommend an iPhone 8 or better. The reason why I pick an iPhone 8 is because it's the first iPhone with a 12 megapixel camera. Over that's kind of overkill. I have two phones. I recommend you get two different lanyards so you can differentiate them. I have one strawberry, one mango. This long iPhone cord allows you to charge the phone while you're taking pictures. I recommend having a couple of chargers as well. They're not very expensive, so I recommend maybe getting a five pack. So once you take the photos, my last photo is always this item skew. And that way I don't actually, I can double check in case I can't find the item. All my numbers are sequential. So I know that 8,064 is before this one. 8,066 is after that one or 80,000 rather. So they're all in numerical order so I can find them. I just reach down as I'm taking the final photo to the item skews, which are on a roll right here. I'm figuring out a way right now to actually attach it so it's easier to reach, but it's not too bad right now. I reach over, grab the number, put it up here. It's the last photo. Once it gets packed, it goes into this clear packaging. I recommend 10 by 13. And the reason why I don't have the suffocation warning on these is because the Ziploc bags are two millimeters. So anything one and a half millimeters or less, the suffocation warning is required, but these are a little bit thicker, so a little bit less of a hazard for, for children. But again, it doesn't hurt to put an additional suffocation warning on top of them. I like the Ziploc bags because people can reuse the bag when they get it versus just a polymeter, which they have to tear and throw away. That's why I picked these Ziploc bags. Also, the ones that open from the side are more difficult to use. Um, so I recommend getting the ones that are on top and I have those links in the description as well. This little cart right here, I got from a dim sum restaurant, but these are very inexpensive. You can just get a little rolly cart where you can pack the item. And then after it gets packed, it gets put away immediately. And I recommend don't put items away that you're not gonna list the exact same day. If you don't list them the same day, you'll end up having a situation where you put items away that are not listed. So I actually recommend you take the photographs and list immediately and then put the items away. But in my particular, situation i put the item away before listing but it does get done at, at the same day so i recommend photos put away list or photos list put away but all in the same day it's much faster than taking photos one day and then spreading out the work over multiple days that's taking one day of work and spreading it over five days i'd rather you just do it all at once take the next five days off a lot of people do ebay stores in just one day per week Okay, so final two things, I recommend getting a yardstick. I've attached mine with Velcro so that it is always off of the ground. But when you're taking photos, it might be easier to just lay it against the backdrop. So once you have your yardstick, I recommend getting it locally because it's cheaper, you don't have to pay for shipping. And then also I recommend a rubber fatigue mat. So you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's or on Amazon. It helps a lot because you're standing and you're on your feet the whole day. So why build this awesome ergonomic system if you're not gonna take care of your feet? So I recommend getting good shoes. I recommend getting a rubber mat. And also my photography process is in a different video. So we'll link that now and definitely check out that video if you wanna watch my photography process, which is about 90 seconds long. We'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you. Smash the like button, consider subscribing.